I'm Renee Ritchie, and this is Vector. Joining me today, Clayton Morris. Since last we spoke, you ditched your job at Fox and Friends. You were the technology guy there. I saw you at all the Apple events. You were up at 3 a.m. covering the keynotes, and now you're doing something totally different. Totally different, yeah. For the past 10 years while I was in television, I became a real estate investor, and it was actually because I lost my job 10 years earlier. I was at Fox in Philadelphia, at Good Day Philadelphia, and the week after I was hired, my news director was fired and she was the one that brought me there. And so I was out of a job and, and I vow, or no, I she was out of a job and I had no internal support. They're like, and then nine months later, they didn't renew my contract because they're like, well, we think you were sold a bill of goods. We brought you here to be the fun morning guy, but we want to take the show like in a, if it bleeds, it leads direction. I was like, that's not what I want to do. And they didn't renew my contract. And I felt like someone punched me in the stomach. You know, huh. it was like, so I was out of a job and um, I vowed then, I said, you know, I'm not going to allow somebody else to dictate my life for me. So yeah. even while I was working in television at the network, then after that, I was buying properties, figuring out how to create cash flow and wealth. And that's what I've been doing for the past 10 years. And then, you know, all this craziness over the summer and politics, and I was like, I don't want to be a part of this anymore. You know, I, I want to spend more time with my family and focus on the things that I can help other people and launched my own YouTube channel, my own, you know, podcast and, and, and everything else. And now I get to do this full time. So it's crazy. It's kind of a it's crazy change. I'll, I'll tell you that much. And it's fun because I launched, I just launched my new podcast and well, I relaunched my podcast, which you were a guest on previously, both the the fun movie episodes and the, the deep dive technology episodes and my YouTube channel. So I feel like like we're almost uh, in this together. Well, yeah, I was super excited because you and I were texting the other day and I was I, I loved, you know, the launch of your new YouTube channel. I love the look of it. We're trying to dial in our channel here, the new, the new we built a TV studio here um, at the office. So we've got all the new software. We're still trying to dial in the backdrop. Yeah, you went with right, wood you know? and I went with brick. <laughs> right. <laughs> and uh, I'm like, okay, what more, what other things should I put in here? You know, should I maybe more shallow depth of field? Yeah. Uh, I wanted to really do as much as I can for, you know, for, for my audience and being able to like come in here and have great 4k video. That's what we're doing on our YouTube channel. Now at Morris invest, we're trying to make sure the audio quality is as good as possible. So I'm listening, dialing it in. You know, I know you were going through those same growing yeah. pains when you launched to the other day. With my the last HomePod episode, I got else. the audio all wrong. <laughs> I know I heard, but I was like, hey, you know what? That's how it happens, right? Yeah. I mean, the first the first live stream that I did, I do a live stream every Wednesday at 11 a.m. It The internet, I got a, a gigabyte Ethernet connection from uh, from Verizon, from Fios, and yet someone had punctured like a Cat6 cord in the house, uh. and it was causing, for some reason, the network to go down like every 30 minutes, like on the dot. It was so bizarre. It was this, and, and I, it, right in the middle of my live stream, I had I dropped like three times. And so, you know, you have these growing pains, but that's, it's part of the fun of this whole thing. Well, you've got an X-Wing on your shelf, so I feel like you've already succeeded. <laughs> so I don't know, but like as you mentioned that, I'm, I want to experiment. The reason I launched this channel is, and not to go off on too much of a tangent, was to make sort of like a variety show where I'd have some monologue, some deep dives, some interviews, uh, some instructional stuff and just sort of all put it together. We even do monthly movie shows still. Um, and I, I didn't want to be afraid of getting things wrong because I feel like if I, if I worried about making it perfect, I would just never have an episode up. That's the thing. And the beauty of sort of setting up your own studio too is that you, you, you find that if you don't have something set up that's kind of plug and play ready to go, if you have to get out lights, if you have to get out microphones, if you have to get out all of these things, guess what? You And, and maybe the muse has struck you to just do a show, <laughs> then you're not going to do it because you have to set up all this crap. Yeah. So by having a studio set up, by you know being able to immediately come down here, like the stock market was crashing last week like yeah. crazy here in the, you know. So I did a live stream and was just talking with people who, some people who had lost like a huge chunk of change yeah. and I was like talking about you know why real estate and the differences there and we were you know it was just great to be able to come down flip on a power switch and just go yeah and have a conversation have a community how is that so yeah, with Fox it was and really... not have my hair done you know bruises and all who cares well it's just a thing like I remember you from Apple events and you were uh, we used to commiserate you me Apple PR the other media people that you were up at like doing the 2 a.m. hit the 3 a.m. hit the 4 a.m. and you had right. to be perfect yeah like every hour on the hour and then still cover the event. Well, there was one time, um, I can't remember what, what launch it was. I think it was, 
it might have been one of those kind of mid boring launches, you know, and um, and I was asleep in the car in the in the in the Cupertino parking lot. Um, oh, like, one of the town hall events. Like, yeah, one of the town hall events. Yeah, and I was, and in between of you know, in between live shots. I, what am I going to do? Drive back to the hotel? I only yeah. got, you know, I only have 40 minutes by the time I get back there in 15 minutes, I can't sleep. So I just would go to my car. I'd set my, uh, set my phone. And the one time my phone didn't go off and my producers were calling me like, Hey, we need you on the platform. We're about to go live in two minutes. And I had just like ran out of my car, sprinted over there. They slapped a microphone and an IFB in my ear and they're like, and you're on I'm like, yeah, we're out here at uh, One Infinite Loop right now. We're, you know, blah, 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 blah. And holy smokes, and I was like people, out of breath. And <laughs> For people who aren't familiar with it, whenever there's an event, there's a broadcast platform. And that's where almost all the networks, all the outlets, the satellite trucks are all around it. Uh, there's PR people helping out. And, and there's uh, directors of photography. There's producers. There's camera people. There's reporters. And you can't really tell by watching them on TV. But they're all packed in there like sardines. And it's hot. Right. And it's, uh, I mean, it's... You, you have the hardest job in baseball, sir. Well, it's so weird too, because you're side by side with people who are shouting sometimes. Yes. Like there was a guy from, there was like a guy from CNBC who loved to hear himself talk. So he was so loud and boisterous and he didn't care that there was somebody else right next to him, uh, you know, doing a, a live shot as well. And also was broadcasting to their entire audience, um, you know, it, and his arms were flailing around. And so, yeah, you're packed together, like side by side. Oftentimes, if you watch White House coverage, you'll hear like another reporter kind of in the yeah. distance, but they're really like next right arm lengths away from the person. And I remember I was with you when, uh, what was the, the first, it wasn't the one that Twitter bought. It was the company that came out, let you live stream over Twitter immediately. And I'm blanking on the name. It was like uh, Mar oh. Marmot, uh, Mela, Meer Meerkat. 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 Yeah. And the guy from Mashable and another magazine, they, they were, I'm streaming live. I have 200 people. And they almost ran me over at the table. It says Mike. And they were arguing over whose table it was to live stream. And I almost <laughs> died. <laughs> yeah, and then Apple was like, Apple PR was like, yes. uh, no, no yeah. live streaming. No, no. <laughs> Please uh, shut that down. So uh, what is it like to go from having an entire network, not a small network, a major network behind you to sort of doing things on your own? Well, the other day, Natalie, my wife and I were just kind of at lunch and we had, she and I, we do episodes together on Wednesdays together where we talk about family wealth building strategies, tax, you know, with the real estate and how to put it all together with your LLCs and, and business structure and all that stuff, because it can be incredibly complicated. Mm -hmm. And so we do that. And we were just talking at lunch, you know, she said, if you would have asked me, you know, like a year ago or even two years ago, like during your lunchtime when the baby's asleep, we'd be able to go live and do our own show talking about the things that we want to talk about helping other people rather than having to talk about Trump or <laughs> whatever's going on in Congress right now. You know, you, I, I wouldn't have believed you. Yeah. And so here we were, you know, we just put the baby down, did this live show. We're having lunch together in the middle of the afternoon. And it's, it's weird. I don't have all the fancy bells and whistles of a, you know, multi-billion dollar network behind me, but I can, do my own thing and it doesn't matter that there's not swooping you know cameras and you know live trucks and all that kind of stuff ready one go the, one motion graphics close on right and, okay you gotta you gotta go okay you gotta vamp you gotta vamp go go <laughs> well because you know renee you know like with your home pod stuff yeah it doesn't matter that you don't have a crane camera in the studio what matters is the content yeah what matters is that people like you know, where did I go to get my first like HomePod information? It was to you because I know you're incredibly thorough and I know that I, well, first of all, know, like, and trust you, but I'm going to you for the content. I don't care that there's not all of these additional bells and whistles. So yes, I want this to look as good as it can be, for, you know, on my YouTube channel, on the Morris Invest YouTube channel. But the first videos that I ever did were just against a flat white wall. And those <laughs> videos where I'm talking about return on investment or cash flow, they still drive like the most traffic because the content was there yeah. and not the white wall was boring, but who cares, you know? So one of the things you mentioned, and we've been talking about this for a while, like uh, it, the town hall event that you're talking about might've been the one for the 5K IMAX. I remember you're heavy into photography and when you saw that machine and how it displayed photos, it was amazing, but you're increasingly going all in on iPads. I wanted to ask you how that was working. Well, I love it. So yeah, I've got, if you're watching the video version of this, I've got my, I've got my iPad pro right here. 12.9 inch. I, this is the, uh, the nine point or the 10.5 inch. 10.5 inch. Yeah. Yeah. The 10.5 inch. And 
I love it. I mean, I had gone back and forth with between the 12 and the 10, but ultimately this is just the portability of it, being able to throw it in my bag. I can pull it out anywhere and just start doing work. Um, for instance, I was working on this video series about cash flow, and there's a lot of different series. I'm building a whole series around it, these videos and podcast series around it. And so I was doing a lot of writing and just went to the office, was talking with my assistant. Well, that's a whole new, <laughs> now that I have, a, I have an office and an assistant also, she's fantastic. And so she was doing work. I, w I just pulled out the iPad and I started, I said, I need to slam through these videos. And I was putting all these things together. I had my notes out. I love using the iPad. It literally, I run my whole company off of the iPad now. Um, uh, traveling on the airplane where it doesn't really matter. My whole team is scattered across the country, yeah. um, you know, in real estate. So I'm able to do everything on the iPad. It's a remarkable, uh, ironically, I'm using the MacBook Pro right now because I'm recording the audio and the video and I, 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 we just can't do that on iPad yet. I hope we can one day. I hope we get to be able to do all the fancy audio right. stuff, but we can't. But when I did the HomePod video, I was using my iPad because uh, I travel with it. I take it on airplanes. I take it to coffee shops. It's got a constant internet connection. It's super light. The battery lasts forever. And it lets me do, like, I can have uh, a website on one, I can have Safari on one split view. I can have notes in the other split view when I'm writing. When my father used to be an engineer at IBM, like back in the punch card days, uh, and, and they moved to mainframes, and then eventually he got an Apple II Plus at home because there was a subset of things that he could do without having to drive downtown to IBM. Uh, and then I had computers for a long time, and I got a Trio and then an iPhone. They, weren't, they couldn't replace my Mac, but they could do a subset of really important things that meant I didn't have to run back to my Mac all the time. And now I have iPad and Apple Watch as well. And iPad can do a little bit more than my iPhone. And Apple Watch can't do anything nearly what my iPhone can do. But there's still a subset of really important, really frequent, really repetitive tasks that I can do without even having to reach for an iPhone and iPad. And I'm, I'm wearing like this, I don't know if you can see it on the video. I'll turn this down for a second. I'm wearing this famous Phil Schiller graphics shirt, which shows um, the, the different screens. And he had this really great talk where he said that, we want to make iPhone so good that it forces iPad to be better. And iPad's so good, it forces Mac to be better. And then Mac has to get so good that it puts pressure back on iPad. Right. Uh, and I like that philosophy so much. I love the back and forth between these devices and the things that we see are powerful on the iPhone. We hope will come to the i you know the iPad. The things that we saw that were powerful on the iPad, like uh, true you know True Tone display, yeah. um, being able to then move to the iPhone 10, which I love, and um, you know the things that are powerful on the Mac, being able to go over to the iPad. I mean, just looking through some of the apps that I you know just to give you some idea of some workflow stuff. And this, some of this might seem a little archaic, but I, I created a new photos line for my contractors. So mm -hmm. when we were rehabbing 15, 30 properties, you know, they're coming across the finish line at any given time. It's hard enough making sure the contractors get us photos when they're finished with their project. I wanted to create one sort of repository. And right now we just use, because contractors are also not terribly tech savvy. Um, they're in the field working their butts off and they do fantastic work, but they're not using Dropbox. They're not yeah. using Slack, you know. Um, so we just created a one Google Voice line. So I use Google Voice on the iPad as the photos come in from different properties. My team is able to take those right off the, you know, right off the iPad, drag them over, you know, move them into Dropbox, label that folder for that particular property, go into the Slack channel in a third pane window right there on the iPad Pro and be able to type in, you know, you know, one, two, three Main Street photos uploaded into the photos, you know, yeah. channel on Slack. And so my team knows that, hey, that property is ready to go. So the, the the pro is incredibly powerful it, you know just if you make sure that some of the apps were updated i wish that like google voice could do drag and drop yeah <laughs> like come on like that would, uh, that would change everything for me if i could just drag those photos right over to dropbox you know? I, I remember when they were first introducing the new generation of processors the a the a11 bionic and they were showing some of the core ML, the core, the core machine learning technology. And one of the apps was real estate based. And I was in the middle of selling my condo at my old place at the time and buying this new place where, I can, you know, where I'm shooting this video right now. Uh, but the, I, I had no idea which photos to use. And luckily I had a real estate agent with 20 years of experience. And he was like, you want to start off with this kind of shot. You never want to start off with the bathroom, but you want to have, you know, show the sun. Um, and they had gone and they had ingested information from like a thousand real estate agents about how they picked photographs and trained. And they talk about like machine learning. It's not like programming a computer. It's like training a pet. It's like good, good computer, good computer. You got it. You got the right thing. Uh, and it knew what people liked in terms of photographs for real estate. And it may not be perfect, but it would do all the heavy lifting. Like it would get you down to like the 15 shots and you could tweak them if you wanted to, but it saved you the three hours of picking out all those shots. 
Right. Yeah, it's incredible what's going to be able to be done with this device. I mean, my I have a couple of my project managers in the field. Um, I can think of them. You know, when I go out and visit our properties, we're in the we're in the you know in the truck driving around, all on iPads, being able to update in real time. Drywall is in, plumbing is completed on this one, roof is done right there on an iPad using you know LTE. Yeah. And obviously, there's all kinds of things that I don't even scratch the surface on, and workflows and all sorts of different things. But we're using a lot of web hooks and Zapier your automations now so that integrate right with Slack. So as these updates come in, it's notifying my entire team. We're getting notifications, you know, right on the iPad, right on the iPhone when we're out in the field. And it's, it's a game changer. It was funny because I actually sold this. So they did uh, briefings for the iPhone 10 in, in New York City. Apple has a lot of briefings in New York now. Uh, and I had just finished at Serenity Caldwell's wedding, and I was planning to take the train straight to New York to the briefing. But they'd had hurricane-level winds, and the trees fell down, and the trains were blocked. So I, like, they just said the train is never coming. So I grabbed my bags, and I ran, and I found a bus, and I jumped on the bus going to New York. And they're like, oh, we sold your condo, but we need you to sign these papers. And normally, I would be freaking out. But I just pulled out my iPad, literally tapped the screen with the pencil, because you have instant, um, instant markup now. So the email came in, I tapped the PDF, it blew up, I signed it, I tapped send back, it sent the signed copy back to my real estate agent, and I was done. Like in two minutes on a rickety bus, in the, like it was five o'clock in the morning, in, in the wind and the rain, heading to New York City, t desperate to make a briefing. And it was one less thing I had to worry about. Well, we looked at one thing for our business, our sales cycle, which was, okay, so when a property comes in, we have it available for sale. What was, what was the holdup? And a lot of it had to do with people needing to print out PDFs at home yeah. and then find a scanner to scan it back to us. Um, you know, when we moved away from that system and we moved to a dot loop or DocuSign, you know, people yeah. commonly know those, our sales cycle uh, decreased from like four weeks down to like like four days. Wow. A ridiculous drop because of technology. And because we were able to be more efficient in our business, our business improved and we were able to better serve our clients. You'd have a lot of people that were like, I'm just so frustrated. I want this property, but I don't know how to, I don't have a printer. I have to wait till I get to work on Monday to even get this thing printed. And then I don't have years. a scanner. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, you know, in fact, I was just redoing my whole office, my home office. And I was just getting rid of so much clutter, taking everything out of there. I really want it to be like sort of a Zen meditative space where I can sit and like do a morning meditation and have it be clean of all this garbage and just the desk with my 27 inch iMac. Yeah. Um, and I had it in the back corner, I had a filing cabinet with a giant printer on it. And I just got rid of all of it. I pulled it out in the hallway. I said to my wife, do I don't need this printer anymore. And she said, really? I said, when, why, why would I need a printer? Why it's taking up so much space. It's annoying. Why don't I just put it downstairs and plug it in? If it's still on Wi-Fi, if yeah. I have to run down once a month to print something out, I won't have to see it. I just, I'll run downstairs to the basement and grab it off in the furnace room. <laughs> I got rid of my, and once in a while it has bit me, especially for government stuff, but Otherwise, it's incredibly liberating. Is there, uh, because I know you're a photographer, so do you, do you move your photography stuff over to iPad now? Is that still on your iMac? You know, that's something I've actually been really kind of looking at in the past. I know Jason Snell and I talked about yeah. this quite a bit. Obviously, he's such a big photos fan and has written deeply about it. And I think a few Apple events ago, we were talking about that workflow. And at the time, I was using Lightroom. Mm -hmm. You know, I was taking a lot of like landscape photography and things, and I kind of shifted over more to the kids because now we've got three kids, and so I'm doing a lot more portraits and stuff when I can, when I have the time, or when we're on vacations and things. Um, but uh, I was, you know, getting sick of just having to use Adobe and having to use Lightroom yeah. and having to pay for that, you know, subscription service every month. Um, then in, in ingesting those photos and then being able to manip manipulate them at home when I get back to my iMac. Now I just use photos on the iPad. I use Apple's Photos app on the iPad. We were just in Turks and Caicos uh, over Christmas time and I brought the little, you know, I the camera connection kit, yep. plugged my SD card right in there, imported the photos that, that I loved, it deleted the ones that I didn't, the raw files, able to go through and manipulate, you know, add, add some uh, different color, you know, color correction and things because I'm a big believer in, you know, if you've got a raw photo, you should be color correcting it no matter yeah. what. So being able to do that right on the iPad or, and then wait, now it's syncing right now. So now it's all in the cloud and I could just wait till I got back to the United States in order to go into photos that way and manipulate some of the photos that I took. Incredibly powerful. Yeah, no, I mean, 
is I know people are upset with that ad that Apple ran, what's a computer? And the, the line at the end, you can take uh, many different ways. You can take it as Apple being provocative. You can take it as Apple being contentious just so that people talk about the ad. Uh, mm -hmm. Or you can take it just like the, you know, the girl being sarcastic to her mother. But I love that ad so much because I, I think it was my favorite iPad ad since the one from iPad 2 where they had um, Peter Coyote going. This is what we believe. Technology alone is not enough. You know, that was a brilliant ad. But this one, it just it showed what uh, sort of a, the liberation that can come with an iPad workflow. I, I still I've been trying. I still can't do that awesome way she folds up the cover by smacking it on the table. But she just takes it everywhere up into and, and it's an exaggeration like up into a tree, into an alleyway, all these things. But it shows that you, you can have this device with you all the time through the full range of activities that you want to do. And it's perfectly capable of not only being with you, but scaling with you. And I thought that was really, uh, really topical on that commercial. I just find it so intuitive and so powerful. And yeah, I've got, you know, my little a smart keyboard case and it goes with me everywhere. And, you know, just being able to do like I've got my Natatmo weather station, just be able to check the weather and then download a bunch of videos using YouTube Red before my flight. You know, um, and to be able to have a sidebar of notes app running where I can do, yeah. you know, write up a work on the speech that I'm working on, pull keynote out and build that. And oh, the other day, my assistant was said, you know, we don't have any updated letterhead. And I said, oh, I've got the logo stored on iCloud. Um, oh, I'll just do it right now on my iPad. So I pulled out pages and using one of the letterhead templates, you know, was able to boom, 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 just add our logo. Here's our new letterhead and just save it over to iCloud. And now you've got it on the Mac. I mean, it's, oh, I love it. Yeah, it's just instant on, instant everywhere. And I think that's the real benefit of it is it, again, it doesn't do as much as, as a Mac, as an iMac Pro, for example. But the iMac Pro, you, you can carry it to Starbucks. You can be that, that person. Don't be that person, but you could be. Uh, but the iPad is just with you all the time. It can do enough stuff that you never have to slow down. You're never waiting for the computer. It's always with you. Yeah, and I love it as my back end for YouTube as well. I mean, you know, think you Google is actually it's funny how they do some things for iPad poorly and yes. other things for iPad very well. For instance, YouTube Studio. I'm not sure now with your YouTube channel if you're using it, mm -hmm. but like, you know, being able to go into YouTube Studio as an app on the iPad, I check it every morning to see what's happening within, you know, within my channel, seeing the health, the audience, the analytics. And it's incredibly powerful. I can change metadata. I can change descriptions. I can update all sorts of things right inside the YouTube, um, the YouTube app, um, on the YouTube Studio app. So it's funny, <laughs> like that's right on my dock, you know, because I use it so much. Like this incredible app from Google, and yet they can't do certain things with Google Sheets and Docs. <laughs> I don't know, where, I know what their attention is. I, I can't figure it out. So what's the next step, Clayton? What's the next big thing you're working on? Are you still working on your studio? Do you have any other projects or next levels you want to take stuff to? Yeah, I mean, for the company, I want to be able to produce. So every Wednesday at 11 a.m. Eastern, you know, a live stream that's consistent around wealth building to help people. I made it my goal this year to try to serve people mm -hmm. um, as much as I can to help them build wealth. We didn't get this financial education in high school. And so to, to help as many people as I can with all this free content, you know, like you, you can literally go through the channel and f change your life, I hope. Get that's a bachelor's the goal. degree like, in wealth, wealth economics. Yeah. And um, yeah, in fact, my video editor, um, he came to me, I didn't think he would, but he came to me like six months ago. And he's like, I have to say like my this and I'm, I'm not saying this is a pat on the back, but he's like, because he has to edit every video. He's like, my wife and I have completely changed the way that we think about wealth. And I yeah. want to do this now. I want to start here. And so that's incredibly exciting to me. I'm working on a book because um, I retired at 40. So the book will be around that around that idea of, you know, retire, how to retire um, at 40. Uh, using cash flow and and buying performing assets. So I've got to carve out some time that was with me hiring my assistant, getting some other people in place to carve out some of that white space time in 2018 where I can actually mm -hmm. focus on writing um, and get some of that stuff out to people and, and uh, try to do a lot more speaking engagements as well. I'm, I'm looking forward to doing more of that this year. And is there anything you're looking or you're hoping that Apple will do either an iOS 12 or future iPad hardware or something that would let you do your job better, more easily, more fully? That's a great question. I think, you know, you we've all lamented the idea of getting, you know, podcast audio on yeah. the iPad, being able to do that. So if I could just bring my iPad and travel and not have to worry about how I'm going to plug in a microphone and, and actually go live and, you know, do something like that, being able to have that functionality would be fantastic. Just some more refinements. I'm really excited about iOS 12 from the rumors we're hearing that it's going to be a, sort of a snow leopard update. Mm -hmm. I'm really excited about those refinements and 
I'm sure that some of the speed and bells and whistles will be, it'll be major changes under, you know, under the hood. Um, but just some, some of the things that I already love about iOS 11, I would love to see drilled in even, even more. Some of the things that I rely on, you know, that I love like voice text, yes. sending voice messages and I love, I'll send you a voice message and you respond with text. Like my, my whole team uses that. Um, so just some of those added little bells and whistles that can really refine that experience for, for speed and efficiency when I'm out in the field or my contractors are out in the field and being able to use this technology more efficiently. So yeah, I'm terrible. I always answer your voice messages with text and that's because I blame you. Your app, Quick Read, got me reading so quickly that I can just parse text so fast. But with the, with the voice ones, I'm waiting for them and I'm like, I'm starting to type and then I'm waiting for them to keep talking and I'm starting to type. Uh, so I just, I revert to text, but I have to, I have to give voice more. I love the idea of voice. I have to give it more of a shot. Well, you know, I was a talker for a living. You're yes. a writer for a living. So, you know, I guess that comes naturally. <laughs> All right. So Clayton Morris, if people are interested in checking out your YouTube channel, following you on Twitter, where can they go? I think the best thing if you're, you know, hey, you love, you love Vector, you love podcasts, come over and check out if you're interested in creating wealth and passive income, we teach you how to do it. That's my podcast is called, it's a very generic name. It's called the Investing in Real Estate Podcast with Clayton Morris. It's very boring, but hey, it's, it, it serves its purpose. And then, yeah, the, my YouTube channel um, is Morris Invest on YouTube. We've got about 200 videos there now. We publish like three times a week um, to help you figure out how to, this crazy world of real estate investing and how to start building monthly cash flow. That's really the best way to connect with me. That's awesome. Clayton, thank you so much. Please give my best to Natalie and the kids. Oh, thank you so much. And give my best to the whole iMore team. I love you guys. we Will do. Same here. Thank you. Hey, YouTube. I'm Renee Ritchie. Thank you so much for watching that video. I hope you enjoyed. Do me a favor, subscribe to the channel, and that way even more digital assistants will get their wings.